Monday from your local news leader, Matthew White, Amanda Brennan, and Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. You're watching The Morning Show at 9 on WCIA 3. All right, welcome back, everyone. It is Monday, and at times, we get to bring you a Wise Guys segment on that day. And so that is this morning, where we're joined now by Paul Quiot, and it is summertime, obviously. We're moving closer to where we have more bugs out and about. That includes our bees, and last week you told us what they see, and you're continuing that lesson. Indeed, yeah. We saw last time that it was cool. They could see the polarization of the sky, and they use that to navigate when they find food. So uh, just remind people with the, the first slide that bees are super important for us. Uh, there's lots of species, even more than 4,000 in the U.S. And uh, all the flower, most of the flowers need them to be uh, pollinated where the bees, particular honey bees, are moving pollen from one flower to another. And that is crucial for our entire, for at least one third of our food supply. So that's, uh, that's certainly a lot. And of course they make honey as well. Um, so coming back to us, you might have heard the phrase bees knees <laughs> yeah. at some point. So I was wondering where that actually came from. And it turned out it came in the uh, prohibition. Whoa. Uh, yes, it turns out that then gin was kind of bitter and not very good. And so they used to mix it with lemon and honey and they had a cocktail called the bees knees. So, <laughs> uh, so we can go to our, our next slide here. And I will just say that the bees eyes are in fact the bees knees. They are great, they're <laughs> fabulous. Um, there are actually five of them. So there are uh, compound eyes on either side, these big ones, that's the ones you're probably most used to, and then there are these three at the top of the head. And so we'll talk about each of them. Let's first do the compound eye. So if we go to the next slide. So um, it has a bunch of these facets. So each eye has something like six to 8,000 facets in it. Uh, you'll see on the, uh, the picture on the lower left, there's actually these things sticking out of it. That's because honeybees actually have hairs between the facets in some cases because wow. they want to make sure they can collect as much pollen as possible. Uh, you can even see in the upper right, just barely there, you can see the little facets, basically. And so uh, each of them, each behind that lens, uh, there's this thing called the omatidian, and that is the structure that has uh, all these, uh, well, some cells at the bottom, not very many, actually only nine uh, different detection regions, and it has uh, four that see green, and two that see blue, and three that see in the ultraviolet, and we will come back to that okay. next, next week when we're talking about that. Uh, but so uh, I don't know if 6,500 seems like a lot or not in terms of number of facets, but it turned out it's not really very many. So uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, we would get basically some kind of a mosaic vision. And actually on this, if you get close to your TV, you'll see that that actually looks really blurry. <laughs> uh, so, you know, 6,000 6, facets per eye, that's like equivalent for both eyes of something like 0.01 megapixels nice. compared to like an iPhone or a new cell phone that might have 50 megapixels or our eyes that equivalently have maybe 5,000 megapixels. So that's pretty amazing. Um, so, so bees don't get super good resolution, but if they're close enough, then they can see, they can see pretty well, as you can see from that. The other thing is that if we look at us, how far we can see, right now I can see out to about this. This is my peripheral vision, so that's something like 120 degree arc, but it's only clear like in the middle six degrees or something like that. <laughs> okay, if we go to the next slide, we'll see that bees actually, because those compound eyes are so big, they can actually see not quite all the way around them, but you know, 280 degrees around. So that's amazing. That's really helpful for avoiding prey that might be coming down onto the bee. The um, okay, if we go to the next slide, we can look at c comparisons of bees. So this is on the left, the, f the females, those are the worker bees. Almost all the bees are worker bees, almost all females. And they have pretty small eyes, uh, relatively speaking, only about 6,500 facets. And that's enough uh, for finding the, their food, the food supply, the flowers. Uh, on the right, we have the males. Those are the drone bees. And you see that they have about 50% more facets and much bigger eyes. And that's because their task is whenever there's a new queen, they have to find that queen and try and mate. And they're competing with all the other wow. males. And so it's all about, you know, propagating the species. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, if we come back to, uh, sorry, n next slide. Uh, so I said that there are five eyes. The ones on the top, those are very simple eyes. They're called the ocelli. They're so-called very simple. So uh, it's a single lens for each of them. And that single lens goes to about a thousand photoreceptors on the back. That would be like their retina. The thing that's strange compared to us is that the lens is out of focus. So it's actually focusing way be behind uh, the, the retina, way behind the photoreceptors. And so everything would be really blurry. So you don't get much image formation. And you might say, well, why do you even want that? Well, it turns out that each 
each of the uh, ocellus, uh, each of the ocelli, I should say, have uh, two different regions of these. There's uh, in the front are the region that can look up at the sky, and in the back is the region that can look at the horizon. And they get the intensity from this from the sky and the horizon, and that enables them to see whether or not they're tipping, or if the wind came and they're pitching and yawing, and so they can very quickly correct for that. Okay. Okay. Uh, in terms of how fast bees can see, if we go to the next slide. Uh, something that's uh, important to talk about is the flicker fusion rate. That's how fast, if you had a blinking light, how fast it would need to go so that it didn't look like it was flickering, it looked like it was continuous. And in people, if you have a bright light, that's maybe up to 60 frames per second. If the, bright's not that, if the light's not that bright, then even down to like 24 frames per second, that's how movies go every 24 times a second. Bees have super fast uh, flicker fusion rate, up to 200 frames per second, which is like the fastest of any uh, any animal. Animal, uh, except for dragonflies, and that enables them as they're flying by very quickly to find their prey. And then just the last slide here is if you want to fool a bee, <laughs> It turns out bees figure out how far they've gone by how quickly the terrain is changing. Mm. And if you put them in an artificial terrain where there's very quick changes in the terrain, they will think that they've gone a much longer distance than they actually have. And in fact, they will slow down because they try to keep the rate of change of the environment to be more or less constant. And so that's so that they don't run into things and they can effectively get their, get their food. So We need to do our part to protect them, obviously. Indeed, and we'll maybe talk a little bit more about that next week. Look forward to what they see in colors for sure next week, Paul. But of course Stay with us here on The Morning Show. Our meteorologist, Jacob Dickey, keeps us informed with our forecast as we prepare for our week. But as we talk about the Illini baseball team, they're actually doing well in the NCAA tournament, but we share how they performed over the weekend against Indiana State. That's a different story in your morning sports show.